and welcome to another edition of the Tour Degree Cycling Show in association with the Rainer Foundation and Sports Aid. Uh, delighted to say that for a very special rest day episode, um, we've got Aussie Neo Pro uh, Harry Sweeney, uh, who I certainly enjoyed watching try and illuminate the race. Uh, obviously, rides for Lotto Sudow. Bit of a difficult time for the team, but first of all, Harry, thanks so much for, for coming on the show. No worries, it's a pleasure to be on. Excellent. And um, just talk us through your first two weeks. I mean, we'll get on to your, uh, you know, your near miss, shall we say, on stage 12. But how have you found this first two weeks, your first Grand Tour, the Tour de France in your first year as a Neo Pro? Yeah, look, I thought initially and by what everyone told me it was going to be a bit of a, a baptism of fire, but it hasn't really been so much. I was uh, nicely surprised, I guess, that I was at the right level for the race. Obviously, the team asked me if I thought I was ready, and I said yes, but um, you, I think no Neo Pro really knows if they're going to be ready or not for a Grand Tour, but I think I was as ready as I could be. And, yeah, the, the first week was um, – it was crazy uh, hard, and we lost a lot of riders. So, yeah, it's been an, uh, an interesting journey so far. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned there about kind of being ready. I mean, there is, there's nothing at any level going through junior ranks, et cetera, et cetera, development teams that can possibly prepare you for it. Was the plan always to get to Paris? Because I know in the past, I mean, I remember uh, interviewing Simon Yates in the 2014 tour, and the plan for him was always to do two weeks and then, you know, then then go home kind of thing. Is it slightly different these days that kind of, you know, you young guys are coming through? you know, you find that level and you find it easy to kind of sit at that level for the full three weeks, do you think? Yeah, well, initially I was actually meant to do the Giro this year. And even the Giro as a Neo Pro, most teams tend to send you to the Vuelta instead because mm -hmm. the level's still slightly different there. But um, the team asked me in December if I thought I would make it around the Grand Tour and made it clear that I'd only be going if I could finish. So I put my hand up and said I'd back myself because... Uh, the longest I'd done before was Tour of King High Lake, which was two weeks and at altitude. So I had a decent idea that I'd be able to make it through. But, um, yeah, for the tour, is a completely different story, you know. Like, it's the pinnacle of the year for anyone that gets selected. So the level's just that little bit more, well, what I've been told, you know, because I haven't actually experienced the other ones. But, yeah, I think for Neo Pro's, you, the team really is careful now, uh, like that's a generalisation for other teams as well, about sending you to a race that's too hard or um, for fear of, like, breaking you for yeah. uh, lack of a better term. So the team was really, really cautious to send me here and made it clear that if I was going, it would be because I said I can do it. Yeah. You mentioned there, obviously, you lost a lot of riders. We were chatting before we pressed record. I mean, the whole team strategy was built around Caleb Ewan and you lost Caleb so early on. How long did it take you to reset that mindset to kind of write the main goal that we were here for is now gone in a puff of smoke very early? How long did it take you to reset that and what kind of process was it? Uh, the process was mainly actually looking at different stages, you know, because Caleb, we had eight days, I think it was, that we looked in the book and we we're like, these eight days suit us and the rest of the tour, it doesn't matter. It's just make time cut, be as fresh as possible. So it changed because I'm not so much for the flat days. Like I could prefer really hard racing. So I've gone through the book and like pointed out these days, I want to go here, here and here. Um, and each of us did that and sort of picked stages we could go in. But a lot of it was more just about being there now in the racing instead of being like, oh, we're not going to go in the breakaway. We're going to ride on the front, bring it back and sprint. It was we're trying to like basically just make the race in any way that we can for TV coverage, sponsors, and then try and get results as well. Yeah. And was stage 12 one of those stages that you looked at with a big tick next to you when you were looking at the road book? I mean, you, you came within a, a relative whisker of, of pulling something quite remarkable off on stage 12. Was that something that you'd spotted and thought, yeah, you know what, that with the climbing, with the, the, the burst, that was something you targeted? It wasn't initially, actually, until the night before. And I was talking with Phil 
uh, and he told me that they'd never had a finish in that town where it had been a bunch kick. So that was one thing. And then we saw the weather forecast and it was looking really windy, uh, nice and open at the start. So that was something that I already liked because I like racing in the crosswinds, like classic sort of racing. Um, so up until that point, I didn't look at it. But then when I saw it and I thought maybe it would be good, and in particular, the final climb was something that I had my eye on as a way to win the race if you were there to do so. Uh, so that was sort of a combination. And then the morning of we woke up, hopped on the turbos to warm up. And then, yeah, basically they dropped the flag and it was in full group straight away. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned, uh, Phil, there, um, you know, how, how important is it for, for someone with his experience to kind of guide you through that first grand too. i mean he clearly you know he knows you know he knows everything there is to know about pretty much every yeah. type of stage it's i think i've been really lucky to be honest with you like it's uh it's not so much the advice that he gives although that is great as well but it's a lot of it is things that he he doesn't worry about which is great as well like you sit in the room together and if he's not worrying about something i'm not going to worry about it either because it probably doesn't matter so that's the biggest part is i think if you lose a lot of energy from stress because it's your first tour that's going to be a massive impact but then yeah the the other things that he's like the advice that he gives is just a huge bonus as well you know like when to be there when not to be there when really matters and it's so the just the years of experience that you can trust and yeah it's it's comforting i guess is the right term more than anything else yeah and you've got a team haven't you there with a lot of experience i know roger kluge has gone but you've got you know kluge uh, gilbert you've got thomas de ghent it must be really good for for you and the other younger lads to to kind of just be in that company and just be you know seeing how they do it because you know you've got that kind of youthful energy and that uh, enthusiasm but i guess it takes more than that like you say knowing when to go knowing when to sit knowing when to move up in a bunch etc etc when to you know chance your arm on a climb do you find yourself learning with with every race day that you do from them guys yeah it's a, a lot of learning from them in how to race it and how to pick out crucial moments in the stage is probably their biggest uh advantage uh that we can get from racing with the older guys but the other thing that you learn a lot about is obviously yourself, like how you respond to to three weeks, how you respond to rest days, which is why I've done one day hard, one day of nothing. Um, and it's really about learning from them. Like uh, when, when we woke up, I was actually worried about whether I could have the day off or not. And Phil was like, oh, man, it's fine. I'm going to have the day off. I've had a day off before and I was fine afterwards. So that was something that was reassuring because like if Phil said to me like, Oh, I don't know about having a day off, mate. I'd probably be on my bike going out. But, yeah, it's yeah. there's a lot of uh, things that you don't think of asking that they can help with, I guess. Yeah. And, and looking kind of, you know, we've got another week of racing to go. I, I'm guessing there'll be certain stages that you'll perhaps be looking at for, for, for yourself or the team will be looking at to try and make an impact in, will they? Yeah, I think it. It's uh, hard to say how it's going to play out the next few days, especially because it's after the rest day and it depends really what the GC guys do. Like if if it's a hard day, it'd suit me. But if the GC guys decide to have a hard day, it's a completely different ballpark. So uh, I think the next three days are going to be pretty difficult for us. But then it's potentially a sprint the next flat day, but there's a 2K climb at about six percent i think in the first 15k so if a strong enough group gets over that we could potentially ride away from the likes of quick step and elberson because there's a lot of guys that don't have their sprint trains anymore so that's the stage and then i'd like to have a crack at the tt again yeah definitely i think you know um like you say I, I, you know there's so many sprinters gone now i'm trying to you know there's really philipson and uh and mark cavendish i guess the you, you kind of two two biggies we've lost Bilhani, we've lost peter sagan caleb etc um and like you said their, their squads are a bit depleted i mean you know tim de Klerk looked pretty banged up when uh when when he had that crash on the gravel you must be really chuffed that you've managed to swerve any of the the kind of big hits and the big spills so far 
Yeah, well, I hit the deck on the first stage, and then after that, I haven't had anything. So I've been pretty lucky to avoid all the major things, but a lot of it is positioning. I mean, there's a lot of guys that uh, we have a joke about it's always being unlucky, but I think a lot of it's actually the positioning and knowing who to ride in the bunch because you can still ride at the front but be on a bad wheel and you're going to go down no matter what. So... A lot of that has been asking Phil and asking Thomas and being like which wheels are good and which wheels aren't, um, but also about knowing your place. Like if you're somewhere where you shouldn't be, like boxing on with GC trains in the bottom of climbs, you're probably asking for trouble. So, yeah, it's really about knowing your place and, yeah, just knowing which wheels are good or not. Yeah. Um- and your season up to this point has been a little bit kind of, you know, all over with the with COVID and, you know, you started really well at the UAE Tour and then just before coming into the Tour at the Bauer Tour of Belgium with, with Caleb. What, I guess, you know, just completing this Tour will be, you know, a huge achievement. But I guess even with the disruptions, you must be really pleased with how this first season has, has kind of gone despite the challenges that come with it. Yeah, well, COVID in a number of ways has actually been quite good for me. Like, if it wasn't for COVID, I would have uh, been in the Giro instead of the Tour and I wouldn't have had the experience here. But uh, it allowed me also to spend a bit of time in Nice and get set up there because I just moved there in January. So, yeah, in a number of ways, it's been good. But to immediately come back from COVID to do Dauphiné Belgium and the Tour was a really good test because this the first day of the tour was three months since I tested positive. So it was actually a quite a quick turnaround and yeah, I can't really say I've had any negative long-term effects that I know of. Um, So yeah, I've been pleasantly surprised really with how my first season's gone. Like you, you don't know if you're going to come in and get your head kicked in for a year or if you're going to be up to scratch, but yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, and obviously last year you you won the um it's the junior version I guess of uh, Lombardy, and you you mentioned kind of you know riding the wind and things. What kind of rider do you do you see yourself as? Obviously, when you go to the, the stage races, you you're there for for Caleb. But from in terms of personal ambitions, what kind of rider do you see yourself as? Is it is it a classic specialist? Ah, uh, yeah, I'd love to progress into a role like that. I guess uh, Flanders and Roubaix, but. I think at the same time, also having the skill set to be good in a lead out as well, it's um, something that's valuable to the team. So if you can provide uh, more than one aspect of your performance that is good for the team, then it's um, it's going to be good for your future. But yeah, personally, I think uh, it climbing in the World Tour, it's like I can do it, but it, not at the level that it takes to win on proper climbing days. So usually hard racing and classics type it is great yeah and just talking just going back to your you know your stage 12 exploits obviously Niels Pollitt managed to ride away from you you know with you know a few kilometers to go what do you take from that what did you learn from that because I mean you put Stefan Kung in a lot of trouble with your your kind of acceleration so you kind of got rid of you know someone like Kung who's a you know very decent rider what did you learn from that whole experience of you know, any mistakes you made or any bits where you thought, yeah, you know what, I'd do that differently next time? Uh, I've thought about it a little bit. I think the main thing that I took from it was the confidence that I do have the skill set and the, I guess the engine to do the races that I want to do well in just based off the fact that Pollitt was second in Roubaix last time they had it. But the, the other thing in the reason why I did – uh, go and attack on that climb was because I saw Kung was suffering, but also because I knew that the the extra years that they've got in their legs and the pro peloton, if I came to the line with them, even if I have the same sprint as them after 10K, it's definitely not going to be the same as them after three and a half, four hours, five hours of racing. So that was the main reason is I didn't really back myself in the sprint as much and wanted to secure a podium if I could. Yeah. Um, and I guess that 
you know, gave the team something to to really kind of celebrate. I mean, I, you know, as it, it's not been the the best of uh, tours personnel wise. What were the what were the kind of celebrations like that night? What did what did you what did Phil Gilbert say to you once you uh, once he eventually got to the finish line and you know the team had realised you'd picked up third? I think they were really happy for me. Like the staff were not surprised, but it was a bit of an unknown how I'd go deep into a tour. So that part was good, but yeah, just um, it wasn't so much celebrations because it's, yeah, like the team came here for wins, but for me personally, like it was not, I wouldn't say a celebration, but I was really happy with my performance. Excellent stuff. Well, we wish you all the very best for the next week. And, uh, you know, I, we're desperately hoping you might be able to get in a break and, like I say, it's, uh, that, to win a, a stage of the tour on your first one as a Neo Pro first Grand Tour uh, would be incredible. Regardless of that, I'm sure uh, we'll see you popping up in the in the next couple of years and, and, and things. Um, just very quickly, what's the rest of your year look like? Do you know what your programme looks like after after the tour? Uh, I think I'll be going to Castellon, which is 11 days after the tour. Uh, San Sebastian. Uh, wait, maybe it's the same race. I'm not sure. I need to have a good look. Um, and then I'll either be doing Tour of Norway or Tour of Denmark, I think. Um, and then hopefully Roubaix. Uh, but I don't think I'll be in the team for Worlds for Australia. So, yeah, it's... We'll, well, it really depends how I come out of the tour, whether I think I need a rest or whether I can sort of keep my form and then do a few one-day races going well. But, yeah, it's after a good tour, I think the main thing is to let it soak in, I guess, a, a little bit. And, yeah, but, yeah, we'll see. Good stuff. Well, we wish you all the very best and uh, hopefully perhaps catch up with you uh, once your season's wound down and, hopefully maybe celebrating a, a win, a kind of maiden World Tour win or a, a, a first win at the World Tour level. But uh, thank you so much for coming on. Hope you uh, enjoy the rest of the rest day and uh, good luck for the next week. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me.